and I'll open the page to see if anyone's. Okay, got it. I think we are live. Yes. Let me just. Hello, everybody. I'm here with the beautiful Dana. I'm really excited to have you here. Oh, you're muted. Let me unmute you. Yeah, there we go. Hello, hello. What? Um, I'm I'm so grateful to have you here to talk about your experience. And I know, you know, it's like I, I get a lot of people who talk about their experience in like the single ladies group. And I'm just really excited to have someone who feels so open to talk about what the experience is like in the other group for women who are in relationships. So thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. I'm, I, I'm, I'm here to share it all. <laughs> I'm so happy. I'm so grateful. I would love for you to share, like, what was your inspiration for joining School of Love? What was kind of like the pull to do that? Mm. So it came, it, it was an aligned experience. So I'd been feeling just some, it, last year was a difficult year overall yeah like it was a I should say it, it was a transformative year um and early in the year it just felt I felt like rocky with my husband and we've we've been together for I mean we've known each other since high school and dated then and so I know the ups and downs mm -hmm. But last year just felt rough and I was feeling exhausted and that I was giving too much yeah. of myself like without return. And I'm like, man, like something needs to change because I'm getting bitter. Mm -hmm. And so I had been kind of contemplating like maybe we need a relationship coach. I don't know how he'd feel about that. Mm -hmm. um, and I talked about it with a few friends, but I also felt like, I don't want to put in the effort really to like research this. This feels like this whole thing yeah. to figure out. And I'm like, oh, and then I, it just, it wasn't quite feeling right. And a friend of mine who actually is in the singles group mentioned this and it was like, so serendipitous, like she mentioned it. And then I said, darn, I wish I could have find something like that for relationships. She's like, oh, there's a relationship. <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh. And Diana, I had no idea who you were. Yeah. I went to your website and you had one little video on there. I was like, oh my God, I love her energy. She feels grounded. She feels, I, I just loved your energy. And this is how I make most of my decisions. And then I read and I'm like, she understands where I'm at. Like it was I mean, hello, that's like just great marketing, I guess. Good job. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but I felt seen and I felt understood and I felt like, okay, I'm in the coaching world. I understand like the power of making shifts. So like this might be a fun experiment. Like we can always get coaching. Like we can always get him involved, <laughs> mm -hmm. but it almost felt like a nice bridge for me to start to understand because this is a world that I'd never really dove into. Yeah. I've always focused on my business and myself, Yeah, but I've always kind of had let, that was the other piece of it. I should say is that I did feel like it was time to start investing into the relationship, Yeah, not just because of the rockiness, but I was like, I feel like if we're going to continue to grow together, mm -hmm. I want us to like, I want to invest more into this versus it just like being good okay yeah. yes That's I love that you said that I I love that you said that because I think it is an area even in my own relationship where we can just assume like it's fine like it's fine you know like let me focus on my business let me focus on my personal growth let me focus on my health but like it this is so foundational to all of those other things we live with this especially when you live with the person right it's like their energy impacts your energy and vice versa and it's like colliding energy sometimes and how are you navigating those moments so I, I love that you said that can you remember at all um what your intention is was uh, like coming into the program like we kind of we all set intentions do you remember part of what that was whatever you're willing to share yeah I'm like I, I'm gonna I have it I think I wrote it down mm -hmm. um because I can I can reflect now as well but one of, let's see. Yeah, here we go. 
this is it's easier to just read so intention tap back into the connection with my husband see him and be supportive to him while also supporting myself finding the balance between be, being there for him and not giving all of my energy away yeah. um, i want to free him more to experience his own journey and trust that he can do it. Um, and then I, I did mention, which is funny, is how polar opposite we are um, and how I want to embrace that versus seeing it as a problem, bringing the fun back and releasing controlling behaviors that come from, well, I'm more clear now, that come from, yeah. you know, fear. Yeah. And that I was just like really, really aligned with that. We've really aligned the work to that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh my yeah. Us. <laughs> yeah. In so many ways. I mean, and I, I think a lot of women, especially married women, we can relate to this feeling that we need to control our partners in order to get what we want. And it's like even the mind can still be like well but I can so see now that that's coming from a place of fear and not trusting and honoring you know in my case my husband right the man to be able to step up and like giving him space to step up and step into the role that I desire from him versus me trying to push him there yeah oh yeah oh my god I think that that is such a huge theme that we explore <laughs> like it's it's incredible to watch how we can all be in in myself included like in different situations but we have those same tendencies to contrive and control and it really is so much like I'll even say to my husband when I'm doing it I'm like I'm afraid and he's like well you need to deal with that fear because whatever you're doing isn't helping <laughs> yes were there any hesitations coming in like and I'm curious what you what your perspective was like, you know, some of the things that women will say was like, well, why should I be the one coming into the program and doing the work? Mm -hmm. Anything to I say mean, that? Yeah, I did. I, I did. I did think that. And I've even thought that during the program of like, okay, so hesitations were, is he going to be on board? Yeah. Um, I thought like I, I had, I, I created, my mind was like, oh, there's going to be all these exercises and I'm going to be like telling him all these things he has to do with me to be more vulnerable or whatever. <laughs> um, because that's where I was coming from thinking it yep. was him. Yeah. And <laughs> um, also, you know, the investment I was like, is again, like I can see the value, but like wondering if he did. So there was like a lot of those hesitations. Now that didn't stop me from purchasing the program. I actually purchased it and then told him. So I don't know <laughs> if that's you know kosher, but that's how I did it. Mm -hmm. um, just because I I really knew this was going to serve us. I trusted my that inner knowing. But one thing in this group that's really helped me on this topic of like why do I have to do all the work. Yeah. I've gained more compassion and understanding. And again, in this case, it's for my husband, right? So we all have husbands in the group. So True. Mm -hmm. for the man in mm -hmm. this case was like, his process is different. And like, I just saw and reflected also in so many other of the members of our group was like that's, we naturally love doing that. Like we're all coaches. Like we naturally are interested in personal development. Like we like taking courses. We like taking programs and that's the work I, like that's my world. And then my husband, like he's a scientist, yeah, like, programmer mm -hmm. and he likes solving problems really, you know, logically and finding solutions and his inner journey doesn't look like mine. Yeah. So when I thought about it that way, it's like my expectation that I'm doing all the work. I actually want to do this and I now see and trust more. It still comes up, yeah. but I see and trust more that like 
he has his own ways of doing the work in our relationship and of trying to show up. And it's better for me to understand <laughs> the la the miscommunication, I bet a lot of women can relate to this. The miscommunication here, the confusion is me not being able to clearly communicate what I need from him. Yeah. And I think this program has helped me understand that and like break that communication barrier that I had and being able to inform and request and yeah. give space mm -hmm. because I'm learning like the masculine, like, like you, you shared this, like the masculine is here to serve the feminine. The mind is here to serve the heart and within that dynamic, but we first need to know what the heart wants. Yes. And so it's like his job isn't necessarily to be in a program like this, mm -hmm. but if I can get clear on things, then I can communicate and he wants to show up for me Yeah. if I can communicate. So like, I, I don't know if that's clear, but it has really shifted my perspective on me doing the work Yes. because I'm getting so much like, this is the thing. It's like, I do this all the time and like, I made dinner for you, mm -hmm. but it's like, I wanted to make the dinner and I wanted a certain thing. Yes. And it's like serving my need, but then it's like, I sometimes put it on him as like a blame. Yes. So this is like, this was for me and for the relationship. And I think he then is also benefiting from it. 100%. And I think that's such a beautiful distinction because, you know, this is not couples therapy. If there, if there is um, like big trauma in the relationship, sure, you need to work on that together in couples therapy. This is really like, I desire deeper connection with myself and, the, and therefore deeper connection with my partner, right? Like I know there are things that I'm not allowing in our relationship or that I'm not seeing clearly in our relationship and it's it's not it's not about like the woman doing all the work it's like there's this desire to go in deep and amongst the other women too and it's beautiful to see like when the topics come up at how much it serves all of you like your question serves the others and vice versa can you give us any tangible examples of like what's shifted in your relationship yeah. So, <laughs> I mean, from really small, well, I mean, the first one is I do think we're both getting better at communicating. Yeah. And for me, it's, there's been a shift from having unspoken expectations yeah. that are not met that I then hold against him. Mm -hmm. You and <laughs> we've cracked that one open a few times yeah, yeah. <laughs> again like just yesterday mm -hmm. and then and the, so I don't know how tangible I'll get more tangible yeah. but so it's like that's a big part for me mm -hmm. and then also this idea that I recognize my own resistance to receive mm -hmm. and if I can't receive then, or if I don't allow myself to receive, then I'm not seeing the ways that he is trying and is showing up for me. Yes, that's been huge. That's been huge. And so, and again, like, that's a me thing. Like, it's like when you talk about love languages, like if someone's filling your gas tank, like all the time and your love language isn't acts of service, it's physical touch. And they're like not holding your hand, you're going to feel a disconnect. Yeah. And so it's been really helpful for me to look at my own relationship to receiving, which is such a feminine experience in all. I mean, of course this, all of this also applies to like all aspects of my life. It's so true. It's so true. It goes way beyond just like the romantic relationship. Yeah. And I think I even said that maybe to you all when I joined, I was like, well, I'm doing this for the relationship, but I also think it's going to help my business too. Yeah, it always does because it's like money and not everybody who comes into the program as a coach, but we do have quite a few and like money and love, they have such similar energies and like the, the, the portal we create to receive both is really quite similar. And it feels so good to open up to that. And then, I mean, the constant reminders and reframes of like where I think it's like a culture too, as women. I mean, 
it's like there's so many aspects that feel really true Mm -hmm. but if you're deciding it's like if you want to be in this relationship and you're deciding to be in it it's like we have to start shifting those things and those beliefs and how we see our partners so that we can be on that other side yes and so you know that looks like giving him space like if I want him to do something realizing that he'll do it but not necessarily on my timeline yeah (laughs) and then holding on to the timeline is what was creating the pain and resistance and then I would just do it then (laughs) then he wouldn't have the opportunity and so like here's here's a great one um this our garage door opener is like funky so we're like, we need a new one. He did all these things to try to fix it. And it still isn't where. So I ordered the new keypad and it's been sitting there. And I'm like <laughs> thinking, I didn't do anything with it, but I'm thinking I'm going to have to handle this. Well, yesterday out of the blue, he says to me, I'm going to take care of the garage door this weekend. <sighs> I was like, oh, and here's the difference in my own perspective. I would say in the past, I would be like, yeah, I'll believe it when I see it. Yeah. And I don't feel that way. I just felt relief. And I'm like, I don't even like, I trust that he'll do it when he can. Like, I don't really even care anymore. So it's like a release of control. Yes. Other little things. Mm -hmm. This has been so big for me though. (laughs) It's like, this happened just last week. I was on a coaching call out in the living room actually. And he made tea and brought me a cup of tea. Mm -hmm. And this has happened a few times. And I literally like never thought that like that he would ever do something like that unprompted. And then like, he brought me a bowl of popcorn. He made popcorn and brought me popcorn. I was like, oh my God, I feel so (laughs) Um, And then one day, like I was in my office, like it had been like my cloth my closet office. It had been like a full day. And he like knocked on the door and came in And he gave me a hug. He's like, this is just for you. Oh. (laughs) And I think it's like that. It's those little things too, that even I may not have noticed in the past. So it's like me recognizing and also opening to receive somehow. (laughs) Like, I think I shared this in the group at one point. I was like, my mind was actually having a meltdown because I was seeing shifts, but I didn't do anything. Yes. 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 It's like, but you are, you're doing such deep work. It's just like, it's not necessarily always an outward conversation or like this outward action. It's like, there's been such deep work. And, um, what was it? What was it that I wanted to share? There was something along the lines of, oh, it's escaping me now escaping me now but yes the feeling that you're not doing anything right but like oh I remember there was a conversation maybe from you or one of the other women or some of them saying like wait was my husband always this awesome and I didn't see it or is he just getting more awesome now like I'm not sure (laughs) and it's likely a combination of the two it's likely a combination of the two because when we recognize like how wonderful someone is like obviously they're more enticed to like keep putting that smile on your face And you said something early on, and I don't quite remember what it was, but something to the effect of like the masculine energy. It's like, I think that sometimes we assume that our our partners aren't as maybe intuitive as we are, but it was something along the lines of like the masculine energy is responding to the feminine energy. So when we shift more into our feminine, then masculine naturally steps up into that. Yeah. I mean, you know, if there, it's always at the end of the day, like, is your partner a willing partner? Right? Like, are they willing? And that's, I always say like, that's for the women who are calling in someone, I'm like, that's got to be like the most important quality is like, are they willing to grow? <laughs> because then you can get through a lot of things, right? But if there isn't that willingness to shift anything, um, and the ego is too big, then you might not see that. But yes, when you when you lean back more into the feminine, it's like you've created space for them to rise more in their masculine. And and it's not this like absolute black and white. Like we were just talking in our session yesterday. Like there are certain ways in which we end up leading 
and, and it's like a leading with like a desire or a vision and then the partner is like, okay, cool, I'm going to catch up to that or how do I make that happen or how do we work on this together, right? So it's not this like, ooh, the woman's always, the woman assuming we're, we're talking about the woman taking the more feminine role, always leaning back and never doing anything, right? But it is this dance. And I think that's why it's so beautiful to have these containers to be able to like talk these things through and say like, which moment in the, which part of the dance am I in right now? <laughs> yeah. Was there anything that you learned? I mean, you've kind of said it already, but is there anything you've learned about in general or about yourself that you just, you didn't expect? a lot but <laughs> I'm like hmm what are we talking about I think one of the things is and like some of the things have brought me to tears yeah. like feeling like the sadness that I'd been carrying this about someone that I love mm -hmm. so deeply right and it, it's just I think I started to see how much gripping I was doing yeah. and uh undermining yeah under undermining him and I just I didn't I wasn't aware of that at all mm -hmm. and it was easy to see like him being the problem right and mm -hmm. and you get in that habit of seeing all the things that they're doing wrong mm -hmm. and we talked about this yesterday which it was like there's this assumption sometimes that you know, I, I would take something on. Yeah. And you said back, okay, but can you think of assumptions that you have? Right. So we, and we all do this. It's like, we, we yeah. only think of in our boxes. It's like, oh, right. I'm doing this too. And then one of the biggest things that really broke me down was this realization of, again, it's around control. <laughs> Okay. Um, <laughs> this realization that he, in my relationship, absolutely positively lets me be myself. Yeah. And he's not like course correcting me at all. And I, I realized how much I was trying to course correct him while still holding the expectation that he didn't course correct me. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh my gosh, if, if, if he related to me, like treated me, I guess the way I often was treating him. And it's not like I was being outwardly mean. It was just like right. these little things. He's like, You're You're doing this wrong. yeah, don't do that. I'm like, oh my God, I would be so like, no. And so it was like this double compassion of one, like, gosh, I can't believe I'm doing that. Two, where is it coming from? And then three, oh my God. And he's what he's still with me, even though he's yes. <laughs> what a kind of really man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that was really that was really hard to look at. And I'm so much more aware, at least now when it shows up, like with our cat, right? I've talked about the cat all the time because we don't have kids. Yeah. And I'll be like, don't feed her too much or don't do that. And then I'm like, no, like I'm over that because for me, as I said, like my, one of my original tensions was it's like to stop the energy leaks within our relationship yes. where I'm, where I'm stepping in and trying to take charge when I haven't been asked and when it's not necessary. Yes. And, and that came in with our conversations. Like if he's coming to me with something, my thought was I need to fix it. Again, that's like super masculine. I don't want him to do that to me most of the time. Yeah. And so I was a, I've started to, another practical thing. Like I've started when he comes to me, I just sit back yes. and let him speak and get it out. And usually that's all he needs. He's like, good. Okay. Thank you. Like he didn't ask you to fix it. He didn't ask you to fix him. That's a big conversation that we, oh my God, I feel like we could talk so much, but that's a big conversation that we have in inner circle too, is like, if we're going to be there for our partners in the feminine paradigm, and again, we don't always have to be in our feminines. Okay. But let's say in the feminine paradigm, it's like, we're just holding the space for them to feel and talk things through. And we don't have to do a freaking thing except be there. 
right? So when I talk about feminine, isn't so much doing, it's like, but I'm holding a nurturing, loving space. It's literally all I'm doing. I don't have to give advice. I don't have to say anything. I can just hear him. Like, I hear you. Wow. I like reflect that I am listening. And that is it. And I remember that being a big one for you too, right? And it, it was, it was like plugging those energy leaks because when he's feeding the cat, and I go through this all the time with like Jack and our kids, it's like, I can either get myself off the couch and like come in to intervene and like miss the mark completely, or I can take this opportunity when he's feeding the cat or feeding the kids or whatever to relax, read my book, sit in silence. Like I get to receive that support or I get to cut it off and try to control instead. Yeah. Yeah. Oof, right. And of course that there's like an assumption that they're doing it the wrong way. Meanwhile, I can leave town. Yeah. And they're fine. Like the yeah, cat, survives. they're fine. <laughs> he has his own, right. They have their own system with the house, which is not my system. And I'm like, fine. And so if I can trust it when I'm out of town and leave it alone, how nice to just trust it when I'm here and just leave it alone. Yes. Can you just talk a little bit about like the experience of being supported in a group and, you know, how do you feel like your individual needs are being supported? Because I know that that can be kind of like a worry about being in a group setting. And I've had the same worry setting up to groups myself, right? But depending on the facilitator, like, how has the experience been for you to be in the group and have your needs be supported? Yeah, I think this in particular, like I actually in general am a little hesitant to join groups. Like it's not really my thing. Like even like back in college and high school, like I wasn't in the groups. I actually like one-to-one -one, the individual and all that. So there was a little hesitation and it was less even about my needs being met and more about not feeling seen or heard. Yeah. Because yeah. sometimes like that, that's like a fear of getting lost in the group. And, but in this situation, honestly, I, I think it's probably better with the group mm -hmm. because you have, and women too, like women, we, we love community. Mm -hmm right? And like caring for each other. And so to be in a group of women who one, right, are all in partnerships. Mm -hmm. And uh, I loved the range, right? We had different age ranges. So like we got wisdom and perspective and different life circumstances. Mm -hmm. It felt so valuable mm -hmm. because we all saw each other, right? And you can share the things like, I don't feel like this was a conversation that came through. It was like, I want to make a decision intuitively. And I so trust my own knowing and he trusts data. Yeah. And like, how do I, I don't feel seen and understood by him. And then for some of the women in the group, be like, oh my gosh, we have the exact same situation. Yeah. And it, it, but what, where the value is where it might not end up in friendships is like in friendships, it's easy to tip over into just like the complaint and the annoyance. Yes. Right. Which sometimes feels good. <laughs> totally <laughs> but in this you can have that like I hear you I totally have this and like even laugh about the you know the situation or vent about it and then we come back to okay and this is true so what do we do with this yeah and I think that's so valuable because like you feel seen and understood by the other people in the group and then together collectively you get to move through that have a solution if you need one or sometimes it's like I just want I, I don't I'm not going to change the fact that he needs data and I need intuition and like I don't want to deal with data and he doesn't want to deal with my intuition although he started saying intuition recently he has started <laughs> yeah, it's true that's crazy there's a practical thing he, he's like my intuition is telling me about this code I'm like okay cool this is amazing but like it's hard for him to understand how I can know yeah. out backup data. Yeah. And it's hard for me to be like, why would you spend so much time researching when we can just know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's not necessarily, those are like core components of who we are. Yeah. 
And sometimes it just feels really good within the group to be like, oh my God, like here we are again with this. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, feeling seen and under, it's just like unbelievable. And we've all supported each other. Like it was such like a mastermind experience. And I, to be clear, like I wasn't even fully participating in all of the support. Like mm-hmm. I, I got so much out of our calls mm-hmm. and our sessions together that it was like, I would sit with that each week. Mm-hmm. And that was like, so, and, and I started to see like, I didn't need to do a ton, yeah. but to show up and receive and be a part of the energetics of your, oh my God, I just loved it. And I loved all the, I mean, I think that's a testament too, to who you attract. Yes. Because I felt very connected. I feel very connected with the members of the group. Yeah. And that is, that is like a huge, I don't know what the word is right now, like benefit or like feature is like the, the, the quality of the women who come into the program, because then it's like, not that they're all, even if they're not coaches, like you are actually our, our whole group just ended up being coaches by chance, but that's not always the case, but they're always wise women, right? Even if they're doing something completely different. And so it's like, you get me, yes, facilitating and leading and the support coach, uh, but you also get like all these other beautiful mirrors. Thank you. It feels really good. Um, is there anything, anything you want to add or say? I really just want to say thank you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, thank you. I, I just, I think it's important too within the group and just with this experience is it has, it's kept me accountable and in witnessing of the shifts, because like when you have a big fight, like, right. We had, you know, we have a big changes coming up right now. And so it's like, that's bringing stuff up. So, you know, we might be fighting about something, but it's like that my mind will go to, ah, everything's falling apart. It's all the same. But to be in the group and the community and on this six month journey, it continually brings you back to the witnessing of like, look at the shifts. Yes. Look how even the fights feel different. Like we're repairing very quickly. Mm -hmm. And I was in the midst of a fight. I mean, he often doesn't see them as fights. (laughs) We're just speak. And then he's like over them. And I'm like, (laughs) But we had a very silly one that I shared. Actually, can I share this story? This is the pasta. (laughs) Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) So I had spent the day on Thursday dealing with all sorts of very annoying logistical things and then like booking this trip and like trying to research and find the best for me. (laughs) And like making tons of decisions. And it was like on the computer, an exhausting day. Yeah. He was also very busy that day. So at the end of the day, of course, he's like, we can get Chipotle for dinner. And I was like, I'm going to make us dinner and sacrifice myself. (laughs) So so I, but really, I just wanted to make pasta carbonara. And so like, I went to make the dinner and I went to him. He was still in his office. I said, will you choose which pasta noodle? (laughs) because <laughs> you had decision fatigue That's I'm like I like was staring at them I don't I do not know what pasta to cook <laughs> and he's like I don't know what do you want I said no I I'm asking you to make a decision he's like I don't care I've had a busy day I'm tired I said I've had a busy day like you know you know how that escalates and he said clearly I care less than you and I I said that that doesn't mean my desires meet. My (laughs) desires are less important than yours. (laughs) And he's like, what's the deal? And then I actually snapped into communication mode. Like this was like some crazy thing in the midst of the fight. And I, I explained, I told him, informed him what was going on. I said, I have decision fatigue. I've been doing, making decisions for us all day. And i I'm glad they're done, but I can't decide. And then he said, and it kind of like stunned me. He said, understood. And he went and picked a pasta and handed it to me. Oh, (laughs) 
And I was like, and like, the, he just, he totally pulled out of being defensive or like anger or any of it and just handed me up. And I was like, oh, hey, lesson, you know, next time I could say, I know this seems silly, but I am so tired of decisions from the day. Like, can you just tell me which pasta to use? Yes, because then you you took it from making it about him and like he's screwing up or he's, you know, being annoying or he's whatever to like, I'm overwhelmed. Like I'm asking for support here. Mm-hmm. And let's be real, it's, in, it's in those micro moments. Like, yeah, sometimes it's big topics. And I know like there could be really big topics in relationships. Like, are we having children? Are we not having children? Are we moving to this place? Are we not? Yes. And a lot of the time, like the, the warm up to like even know how to deal with those things, right? Is like in the micro moments, in the like which pasta or which restaurant or like um, who's doing this with the cat or who's doing this with the kids. And it's really in those moments. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. And then I get to receive support. He gets to feel like he's doing something right. Yes. And how, you know, it's just, it totally shifted the dynamic, but like for him to just stop and say, understood, like it floored me. Yes. So it's just beautiful to be able to see those show up because it does, it does build my trust in yeah. our ability to handle bigger things as yeah. they come. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Thank you for sharing. I think this is going to be really helpful to women watching who are in relationship and then even those who are like maybe newer in relationship or imagining, you know, what it's going to be like when they're in one just to see like, yes, when you know you're calling in love, it's like you want it so bad and then it's here and you get used to it and then you like start taking it for granted and you're not really like honoring the connection the way you used to and it's just so beautiful to see these like these small tangible moments that can create disconnection that actually end up connecting you more. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And I kind of think about that too with love. Um, It's like, for us at least, like there's no question of that. Like neither of us are insecure about the other's love. So it's like, that's a given. And it's very interesting when that becomes your baseline, like secure love because then you get to start to look at, okay, well, clearly I can be like all over the place and still have that. So what happens when we start really taking that and building on that versus leaving that, like we can always fall down. Yes. And so it, I don't know if I'm explaining that, but it just feels like this has allowed us to really, and it's just the beginning, I feel like to really amplify Mm-hmm. and deepen and solidify our connection but also the other parts right like with play and with more ease and joy and exploration mm-hmm. it feels exciting instead of just kind of sitting at the baseline which is where I think we were it's like we're just like well we love each other and yeah. so we don't and now we're getting to kind of play knowing that love is always it's like the trampoline it's like yeah. where we're always going to land back down So I don't know. It just feels really fun to push the boundaries a little bit and see what unfolds. Mm, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, If anybody watching has questions for you, can they tag you? Yeah, they can tag me. Also, if they, uh, I'm on Instagram way more than Facebook. Yeah. At Dana underscore Evans. At Dana underscore Evans. Kim, let's see if I can add that in right now. Yeah. I love, I mean, I love talking about this stuff. It's just, I love this program. I love the work and it's just so fun to see all the shifts that have happened within each other Yes. and within the relationships. And then like, even as we come with new problems, new obstacles, like, and then we go back out and we get to like use it and then we come back. So it's just such a, that's a nice landing place, right? Like the program is such a beautiful landing place of, Ex, like you can go out and explore in your relationship and then you have this group to be held when you come back and it's just I'm so honored to be a part of it and I'm grateful for your guidance as well Diana it's just and you're you're like grounded compassionate energy it just radiates all the time and I just I was like from the get-go I'm like I just know that she's the right person to guide me because I'm very 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 choosy like 
and resistant, in fact, to a lot of guidance. And so it was just so easy to receive from you. So thank you. Oh, thank you. I love you. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Ah, oh, okay. That was so that was so delicious. Um, for any of you watching who have any comments, questions, tag me, tag Dana. I'll I'll put your handle because I put Dana Evans and then it just went to your Facebook name. Um, so I'll make sure I put I drop your actual handle and uh yeah, just let us know like if this resonates with you, if you have questions about like the experience or just anything really. Great. Right. Thank you, thank you. You stay on, we'll say bye to Facebook. Bye. <laughs> bye.